let's be real. Some of our favorite players that we love to romanticize about, their legacies are at least a little bit overblown. Like, yeah, a lot of household names. They gave us great moments, crazy highlights, great regular seasons. But a lot of times when it counted most, they didn't quite meet those expectations. In this video, I'm going to talk about superstars who unfortunately have some of the more forgettable playoff moments. But before we get into that, if you guys like the channel, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on post notifications. If you like what you're seeing, man, the, the least you can do is do that. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's free, bro. Just, just do it for me really quickly. Thank you. I think he's fallen into this assist to turnover ratio thing where, you know, Chris is a very safe player right now. And statistically, you know, he maxes out in every box. However, I don't see Chris going outside of himself, outside of those boxes to take extraordinary risk. Chris Paul really used to be one of my favorite players growing up, but I'm sorry, today I just have to get on his head. CP3 stint in New Orleans is actually very respectable to me. He went to a team that won 18 games prior to his arrival and he got them to the playoffs three out of his first five years. With his lack of real help, he just really couldn't get past the big dogs, but it was still very respectable. What I have a real problem with is his run in LA. Here's where it gets kind of embarrassing. His first year there, CP3 and Blake Griffin completely changed the culture. Like they went from trash to what should have been a real title contender. But the playoffs, they just wrote a different script for the Clippers, man. Their first year, they barely squeezed past the Memphis team, and then they met the San Antonio Spurs in the second round and got completely dominated. They got swept. And what made it kind of worse, in game three, after fumbling two games in San Antonio, they tried to go back to L.A. and defend home court and early, it looked like they were doing that. They had a 22-point lead in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, they got outscored by 12. And in the third quarter, they only scored eight points. And they just completely fumbled that series. That, I mean, that just didn't look good for CP3. Then the following year, Memphis and Zach Randolph, they just completely bullied the Clippers. They kicked their ass in six games in the first round and just got them out of there quick. Then the following year, this is when things were supposed to change. They got Doc Rivers, they got more help, and it looked like things were on the uprise, but it was just more of the same. In the first round of this year, they beat an emerging Golden State team in seven games. Then they play OKC, and I say this all the time. In game five, this was the score, and these were the stakes in the fourth quarter. Mind you, if they win this game, they go back to LA up 3-1 with a great chance to close out this series and get to their first Western Conference Finals. But somehow, this happened. And they lost in six games. Then the following year, you say to yourself, if that wasn't the year, this has to be the year. They finally got past San Antonio in the first round. KD has a Jones fracture in his foot, so OKC didn't even make the playoffs. This is the perfect year to make the NBA Finals. Nah, nah it didn't even happen, man. The Clippers met the Rockets in the second round, got up 3-1, and they missed every opportunity to get to the Western Conference Finals. Now, fast forwarding to Houston, because again, this is about Chris Paul. They dominate the regular season, just completely dominate everybody. James Harden wins the MVP. Chris Paul makes his first Western Conference Finals. They get up 3-2 against the Warriors with KD. And Chris Paul got hurt, and that pretty much ruined their finals chances. I'm not trying to trash Chris Paul, but for a player of his caliber, that resume is pretty embarrassing. Now next is James Harden. I know I just got on CP's head, but Harden definitely has his stuff too. I don't think Harden's resume is as bad as some people make it out to be, but it's definitely not the prettiest. In 2012, James Harden made his first NBA Finals and no, he didn't start. 
but he did play pretty significant minutes. For whatever reason, Harden just seemed a little tentative and he just didn't have his best series, but I don't really pin that on him because that wasn't even his team. He was playing with Russ and KD, so I, I kind of give him a pass for that one. But in 2015, remember how I talked about Chris Paul blowing that 3-1 lead to Houston and all that? Well, yeah, don't think that had much to do with Harden because it really didn't. It almost happened in spite of Harden. In Game 6, Houston came back from a 19-point deficit, and the only reason they did was because Harden was on the bench. He was literally shooting them out of the game. Almost everyone on that Rockets team had a positive plus minus except for James Harden. Then in the conference finals closeout game against Golden State, Harden completely laid an egg. He only made two shots in the entire game. Fast forwarding to 2017, James Harden has a MVP caliber year and in the second round, they meet the Spurs. Game 6, Kawhi doesn't play, and this is a closeout pivotal game. You would expect the MVP calendar player, no Kawhi, it's time to go crazy. Again, he made two shots for the entire game. Then afterwards, it comes out that he hit the club directly after the loss, so that didn't look good. So for Harden, I don't think it's the worst, but for what he does in a regular season, the playoffs is literally all he has left to prove, and his, his, his legacy is solidified. A lot of people absolutely love Vince Carter, but I always said, I'm sorry, he ridiculously underachieved, and I, I just can't take that back. Yes, I understand early in his career, he played for the expansion Toronto that was kind of disastrous and all that. I get that part, but he definitely had his bad games in very big moments. In his very first playoff series against the Knicks, he got swept. And in that final closeout game three, this is what he did. Now, mind you, this is one of the best scorers in the league at the time. He's literally known as Michael Jordan with a three point shot and he just melted in that game. Then the following year, they met the 76ers in the second round, and in another closeout game, this time game seven, he kind of disappeared again. Fast forwarding to his New Jersey days, he got traded midseason, they made the playoffs, and Miami swept them, like easily swept them. And Vince didn't play bad, but he didn't really shoot the best, but I don't really pin that on him because that season was a little chaotic. But for the next two seasons, a team that just made the finals two consecutive years before Vince got there, they couldn't even get past the second round with all that talent. And Vince was kind of supposed to be the guy to elevate them. The whole Nets trio just didn't work out. Orlando picks up Vince Carter, a team that just made the finals right before he got there. And then the Eastern Conference Finals, they lost. And Vince really didn't play that well. Now, in Orlando, he wasn't the star, but you would think with the pieces they already had in place, a season Vince would be the missing piece, but he just never stepped up to that task. I'm sorry, but for a player with Vince's talent to barely make the conference finals once, I'm sorry, that playoff resume is a little trash. DeMar DeRozan, he's a player that I always felt a little bad for. He's a player that plays the most like Kobe or maybe even a Jordan, but he just never had that dog and that passion inside like they did. And it's evident. It seems like when it always mattered most, he always played like a number two or a number three rather than that number one option that you would love him to step up and be. In the playoffs with DeRozan, Toronto was embarrassed by one man year after year after year and why it was a little bit embarrassing to me is one of those years aka that last year Toronto had a way better team on paper in 2018 after winning the most games in franchise history they met a Cleveland team that just went seven games with Indiana and they got swept DeMar put up the worst postseason numbers of his career They got their coach of the year fired. And to me, this was the icing on the cake. If we had LeBron on our team too, we would have went on. Now, the next player literally 
and I mean literally, he just got dealt a terrible hand and it kind of ruined his legacy. Out of all the legends in that Last Dance documentary that we heard about, Magic and Leary, Isaiah Thomas, Barkley, Karl Malone, Ewing, Drexler, Reggie Miller, etc. Who's the one legend that we didn't even hear about? Dominique Wilkins. This man was basically the LeBron freak-like player before LeBron, and you really never hear his name in anything pertaining to winning. Unfortunately, that was mainly because of his team and definitely his error. He got drafted in 83 and he played in the beast of the East. And I'm talking about Milwaukee with Moncrief, Larry Bird and the Celtics, the Pistons, the Bulls, like everything was tough. Despite putting up very respectable numbers, in 10 years, he only won four playoff series and he never made a conference finals. Like it, it was just hard for Dominique. Unfortunately, his most noteworthy moments are dunk contests, and that's just kind of how it was. Now, next is Carmelo Anthony. Now, first, I will give him this credit. In his prime, this dude could get his team in the dance every year. Like, that was never the problem. For his first 10 years, he made the playoffs every year. Like, I thought he deserved that rookie of the year because of that. But his problem they just never did anything once they got there. While his contemporaries D Wade and LeBron was getting to finals and winning finals, he just couldn't get over that hump. Melo was struggling to get out of the first round. Like he was struggling to win a game in the first round. For his first seven years, he got out of the first round once. And we all remember that one. Back then, the Nuggets played way too much isolation ball. It was strictly Iverson, Melo. They were basically the KD and Russ way before KD and Russ. As soon as they traded Iverson for a more team-oriented Billups, they immediately made the Western Conference Finals. Melo's numbers went down, but their team success went up. In 2012, Melo reached 50 playoff games. That wasn't a good thing for Melo because he unfortunately had the worst winning percentage of any player that reached 50 playoff games. Not saying it's all his fault, but for somebody like Melo to have double the playoff losses than you do wins, that I mean, that's kind of embarrassing. And lastly, I mean, you have to go T-Mac. I completely understand how great of a player he was, how his career got shortened by injuries, and all the moments that he gave us, but let's be real never winning a playoff series that's pathetic and kind of the unfortunate part of those weird playoff losses is kind of those coincidental storylines in one of the series that he lost he was up 3-1 against a detroit team that he was dominating in the first four games then after game four fresh off that playoff high this man had the audacity to say it feels good to finally get to the second round. Not even finishing the job yet, he said that. Right after that comment, Orlando got embarrassed in game five, only putting up 68 points. And in game seven, similar to his cousin, T-Mac laid an egg. Then in Houston, they failed to get to the second round repeatedly. And the one time T-Mac gets hurt and can't play in the playoffs, they get to the second round and almost beats the Lakers in seven games. Like, th that was just crazy. I don't really know what it was with T-Mac in the playoffs, but his was definitely the worst. Never even winning a series. I mean, come on. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys leave a like. Turn on post notifications. Don't just leave the video. Please do that for me really quickly. Follow my social media sites. Do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.